Hi guys! Hi and wel welcome to Food Allergy Canada's Allergy Pals Monthly. My name is Julia and I'm so excited to welcome you guys to this month's session. If you weren't here last time, here's how it works. We talk about a certain topic and have some fun polls, interactive activities, and a question and answer time at the end. This month's theme is dining out with food allergies. Okay, so let's just go over, guys, how to participate. So with the question, you can either do, you can do it two ways. So we have a question box, which will be at the side of your GoToWebinar control panel at the bottom, as you can see with the arrow. And you're able to answer through the questions on that. And then I'm able to see them, and um, we're able to talk about it a little bit more. The other way that you guys can participate is by raising your hand. So that's also on your GoToWebinar control panel. Once you raise your hand, we're able to see it. We will then unmute you and you can speak with your microphone. So then we'll all be able to hear you, which is also really cool. So I just want to introduce myself, guys. So hi, I'm Julia. So I'm allergic to peanuts tree nuts, fish, and shellfish. Um, my hobbies are swimming, reading, and watching sports. Uh, for example, last night I was watching one of the one of the basketball games for the for the finals, and that was pretty cool. Um, my favorite restaurant food. I'm gonna have to go with either some wings, like some wings and fries or like a burger and fries. Like I love that, I love pub food, like that kind of thing. And what I like the most about eating out, I think it can be so fun eating out with your friends um, because everybody's having a good time and I really think that food can bring people together. Okay, so first poll question. Do you like going to restaurants or dining out? Select one of the following. Yes, no, or sometimes. Okay, 100% of you guys said yes. If um, I can't, if I were to answer this question, I would say sometimes. I do like going out to eat, but only really once in a while. And that's only because I also really like cooking. Um, and sometimes, and sometimes I just, I don't know what I want to eat. And going out to eat can be bad for you. But I'm glad that everybody enjoys going out to eat. Okay, guys, so now we're going to do some true and falses. So what I want you guys to do, answer in the question box whether you think the question is true or false. So the first question is, there are 94,290 restaurants in Canada. Do you guys think it's true or false? Write your answer in the question box below. So Tamara says true. We got Andrea also saying true. We got a couple of more trues. Cool. Okay, so let's. I'm gonna let you know if this is if the, you guys are right at the end. So let's go to number two. It's the law for restaurants to provide special allergy menus. Do you guys think that's true or false? Write that in the question box below.
Number three, all restaurants have epinephrine auto injector in their first aid kit. And we have a bunch of, ooh, there's a, there's a couple of different ones here. We have some trues and some falses. So let's take a look and see. So number one is true. So this is including restaurants and all foods. So there are 94,290 um, restaurants in Canada. Number two, it's the law for restaurants to provide special allergy menus, is false. This is done voluntarily by restaurants. They are not required to do so. And number three, all restaurants have epinephrine auto injectors in their first aid kits. This is also false. And this is why it's very important to bring your own because no restaurants carry epinephrine auto injectors in their first aid kits. So eating out, what can we do in advance of going out to eat? Write your answer in the question box below. So what are some things that we can do before we even leave the house when we go out to eat? <coughs> oh, excuse me, I just sneezed. So I'll share what's one thing that I do before I go to a new restaurant. I always Google the restaurant and take a look at some of the reviews and I'll even look up their menu. So for example, one of my favorite restaurants is called Scataboosh. It's an Italian restaurant and I always look up their menu whenever I go and I kind of plan what I want to eat before I even leave the house. Okay, so we have Heather that said bring epinephrine. So important. You always need to make sure before you leave your house that your auto injectors are on you. Um, Elaine says, asks if there's nut, ask if there's nuts. You can totally do that once you get to the restaurant for sure. Um, Tamara says, reserve a table, bring EpiPens, absolutely. And Andrea also says, bringing your EpiPens. Nice, nice job for saying reserve a table. You don't, you don't want to get somewhere and be turned down. <laughs> Good job, guys. So yeah, those are some awesome things that we can do. Uh, one's for sure bringing our auto injectors, and another one, like I said, researching the restaurant in advance. Have you been there before? If you haven't been there before, maybe you want to check up online their menu to see what kind of food they serve. Okay, so you can visit the website. So under the nutritional info section, sometimes they have an allergy section. You can also call in advance. So speak with chef or manager. So you're able to actually ask them um, what they can do for you before you even get there about your allergies. Will there be options for you? Do, you, do they um, recommend a specific dish for you? Number three, telling your friends and family about your allergies. I always make sure whenever I go out to eat that there's someone at the table with me that knows about my allergies, number one, and number two, can use the EpiPen just in case something were to happen. And number four, if you are unsure about a restaurant, which I have been before, I have gone to a restaurant and have been unsure about it, bring a snack, eat a snack in advance. Eat before you even get there. That way you're not as hungry when you arrive. And bring a snack with you. Just in case you aren't able to eat um, any of the food there and there are no options for you, bringing a snack with you and having a drink maybe at the, at the restaurant, like a Coke or a Sprite, will allow you to really feel like you're in it with everybody.
Okay, so I'm so some questions that you guys can ask. I'm allergic to insert your allergies. What do you recommend I should order? If you say this to a restaurant manager or the chef, they're able to really um, talk to you about what your options are. Number two, how will you make sure my food won't be in contact with my allergies? That is also a great, great book question. And the, one, of the, one of the things that I find most annoying about restaurants is that they only have one grill. So usually all the stuff that's grilled, that's including fish, meat, chicken, sometimes tofu, is all grilled on the same grill. So some people that can be allergic to soy, people that are allergic to fish can be at risk with that. So what are the steps people are taking to make sure that it won't be in contact? And number three, I'd like to order blank. Is it possible for me to make it a special way so it will be safe for me? I do that one all the time guys um two weeks ago i asked for fajitas and usually they grill the fajitas i asked them to pan grill them so they got a pan instead that way there was no possibility that it can be cross contaminated with anything else So allergy policies at restaurants. So some restaurants guys provide a couple of things for you. So they can provide ingredient lists or special allergen menus. So what are those? Have you guys ever been to a restaurant that had a special allergy menu? Raise your hand if yes. Awesome. So a couple of you guys raised your hands. That is absolutely awesome. So for those of you that raised your hands, would any of you guys want to share what the special allergy menu was like? Tamara, um, Tamara would you like to share? Um, it's like at Red Lobster, they have an al they have an allergy menu, and um, like it has sections with stuff with allergens, and like if it has that allergen in it, it would usually be like X. Awesome! Thank you so much for sharing. So guys, this is sometimes what, an, sometimes what an allergy menu will look like. Not all the time, but most sometimes. So something like this. So this was actually taken from a website and this is what their allergy menu looks like. So on the left-hand side, you have all of the things that you can order, so all the different foods. And in this case, it's sandwiches. And then at the other side, going along the columns, you see different allergens. So for example, egg, fish, milk, peanuts, so on and so forth. Then underneath that, if it does contain the allergen, they put, they'll put like a dot or an X. So if you guys look a lot at these, a lot of them have gluten and a lot of them have wheat because they're sandwiches. So that's sometimes what it looks like. And this is a great way um, for, if a restaurant has it for you guys to see if something can potentially be safe for you or what your options are and how many options you have. So this is another restaurant example. This one's a little bit different, a little bit more complicated, but instead of using a, a chart, they have pictures next to everything that's being ordered. So for example, if you look at the cheeseburger, it has like pictures of, I feel like that's fish. I feel like that's fish. They have, it looks like a milk, looks like a soybean. So you're able to see um, what allergens it can potentially be cross contaminated with or contain.
Okay, guys, poll question. So how hard is it for you to find safe food at a restaurant with your food allergies? Select one of the following. Difficult, not so bad, or very easy. Okay, so some of you guys, 67% of you guys, a little more than half said not so bad, and 33% put very easy. If I were to answer this, I would also put not so bad, just because I find that I can always find an option for me, um, even if I have to search for a bit and have to talk to somebody about it, I'm almost 90% of the time able to find an option for me. Thanks guys so much for answering those. So staying safe at restaurants. So first and foremost guys, and I've said this already, have your auto injectors with you. Um, one time I actually left the house um, to go to a restaurant with my friends and when I got to the restaurant I realized I had forgotten my epi my epinephrine my auto injectors in my other bag So I was not able to eat. I did not eat. I forgot them I had to I had to realize that I forgot them and take the responsibility and I did not eat um, what I actually decided to do, so I called my family. My sister happened to be leaving the house with her friends, and she brought my EpiPen, uh, my auto injectors to me. Um, but if she wasn't able to do that, I would not have eaten, just because you don't want to take a risk. If you don't have your auto injectors with you, do not take a risk. Do not eat. N number two, communicate. Tell the server, chef, or manager about your allergies in advance. Guys, usually they're so, so, so good at finding options for you. And ask questions to them. For example, what food would be safe? Can they alter a recipe for you? Can your food be prepared on its own designated grill or surface? My question to you guys right now, what questions would you ask if you were at a restaurant? Raise your hand or answer in the question box below to share. Haley, is there something you want to share? What what kind of what ingredients are in it? Awesome. So then when you ask that, they're able to tell you if your allergens in it, right? That's awesome. Thank you. Anyone else have anything to share? Raise your hand. And um, we have a couple, someone says, can I eat this? And someone else says, can I read the ingredients? That's awesome, guys. Some awesome things asking about the ingredients. What is in the food that you are going to be eating? Great job, guys. Okay, next poll question. So have you spoken up and told a waiter, chef, or manager about your allergies? Select one of the following. Yes. No, only my parents do, or sometimes. Okay, so a couple of you guys said yes, and the rest of you guys said sometimes. Um, does anyone want to share? Raise your hand if there's something you if there's something else that you do to make someone know about your allergies.
So Tamara, your hands up. Is there something you want to share? Um, you can show them you have an EpiPen. Sure, yeah. And then that'll let them know that you have allergies, right? Yeah. Yeah, cool. Um, but you can also tell them about your allergies too, right? Yes. Awesome. Great. Okay. So yeah, guys, so I think it's super important to tell a waiter or chef about your allergies. That way you guys are able to get into conversation about what kind of options you have. So someone shared, sometimes I do and sometimes my parents do. Absolutely awesome. Um, you can totally do that. And I'm glad that someone that you're with is able to speak out about it. Um, someone else shared for ice cream, ask if they can wash uh, the scoop. You can totally do that too um, to make sure that there's no cross contamination. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Okay, so let's practice a tough situation. So, what would you tell a waiter, a restaurant server in this situation? The restaurant server says, I think the cake should be safe for you. I can't find an ingredient list, but it should be fine, right? How would you guys respond? Put your answer in the question box below or raise your hand to speak. Oh, sorry guys, my computer went a little crazy for a second. So we have a couple of people saying, no thanks, I'll pass. That is awesome, uh, making sure that there is no risk. If the person, if the waiter or the restaurant server is not sure, it is absolutely fine to pass up on it. I think that is such a great thing to do. Um, somebody else said, no, what else is there? Absolutely, ask them for other options. Is there any other options for you? Um, so what happened? Something that happened to me two weeks ago when I went out to eat with my parents is there was, I usually don't ask about desserts, and there was a dessert option for me, and they offered it to us. And they said, oh, we know you have allergies, so let's give you, would you like to try this? It does not come in contact with any nuts. And we, and that was awesome. Um, a lot of people say, uh, I can just not eat. Awesome. Right thing to do. Great job, guys. Okay, so this is like my favorite part. It's time for some allergy wheel of fortune. So what's going to happen, guys, is I'm going to slowly reveal letters of a special phrase. I want you guys to type your guesses in the question box below. The first one to guess the correct phrase wins. Are you ready? So that's what it looks like. And I'll keep it here. That's what it's gonna be the phrase, okay? So I'm gonna reveal the, the letters slowly. Any guesses yet? Getting closer.
Okay, we have a we have a winner. I'm still going to reveal it though for those of you guys who haven't found it yet. Awesome guy, awesome job guys. So we have Andrea who shits, who got it first. It is guys, ask in advance, don't take a chance. And a lot of you guys also got it so soon after. So we have Shannon, we have Haley, um, we, have, we have Joseph. Awesome, thanks guys, you guys did amazing. So guys, my question to you guys, why is it important to ask in advance and don't take a chance? Raise your hand if you want to speak or write your answer in the question box below. Okay, Haley wants to speak. What do you think? Um, you should you shouldn't take if you take a chance, then you might have an allergic reaction. Absolutely uh -huh. right. Yeah, so it's important if there is a risk, ask in advance. If you think there's a risk, don't take the risk. Just don't take it. And asking in advance is so, so, so important too because otherwise you're taking a chance and you do not want that to happen. So we have uh, every most action, most people are saying because um, you can have a reaction. You guys are absolutely right. You don't want to have a reaction. So it's important to plan ahead and do everything that you can. Thanks guys, great job. Poll question. So out of the following options, what do you guys think would be the most risky with a food allergy? Number one, restaurants. Number two, fast food chains. Or number three, buffets. A hundred percent of you guys put buffets and I would put the exact same. It can be so risky with buffets because of so many different reasons. Um, buffets are so much food. There's so many, so much different types of food with so many ingredients and so many people getting the food. And there can be your allergy in some things, but not others. And everything's out there with different forks and different utensils and people are grabbing things and cross-contamination can happen and usually there's multiple people making the food so it's not just one chef making the food or working on your meal it's multiple chefs working on multiple dishes that you are going to be grabbing so what do you guys i use the word cross-contamination what do you guys think cross-contamination means Write your answer in the question box below or raise your hand. Okay. 
Okay, Tamara has the hand up. Do you want to do you want to share? Um, I think cross contamination means one like something you're allergic to might have like touches something you're not allergic to and that you're gonna eat it. Absolutely, absolutely right. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, a, a, other people are saying it may touch, um, it may touch the allergen that you are allergic to. So yes, that is exactly what cross contamination means. It means when one food that you can eat accidentally comes in contact with something that you can't eat, that you are allergic to. And then when you have that food that you can eat, you might have a reaction. So it's a small amount of food that gets onto another food accidentally. So examples are food touching food, so on the same grill. So if you're allergic to fish and you order chicken, it's chicken and the fish touching. Or as you can see in the picture, we have peanut butter and jam being made on the same surface. If you're allergic to peanut butter, that can be risky for you. And cookware and utensils. So for example, shared tongs at a buffet where somebody could grab food from one, one bin and then take it over to another food and then put it back. So this is, this is why it's so important to ask about it when we dine out, to tell somebody about our allergies, to ask questions. Um, there are more helpful videos on this at youtube.com slash food allergy Canada. Okay guys, so it is question time. So there are a couple rules. So no parent questions, just kids. So you can do two things. You can either type your question or raise your hand to be unmuted over the phone. Keep it short and sweet. No medical advice, sorry. One question each, two if there's time. Oops. Okay, so I see Ryan's hand up. Ryan, what's up? What do you want to share? I think he had his hand up by accident. Oh, okay, no problem. So I'll start it with a question that I was given in advance, guys. So how do I get over the fear of eating out at a new restaurant I've never been to before? So we kind of went over this quickly but it's super important to research the restaurant first. This can be done either through the website or by simply calling over the telephone. Some restaurants actually don't have their menus online, so it would sometimes be better to order to find out from the phone. So when you're calling or looking it up, find out what safe food options they might have. If you're at a new restaurant, stick to ordering something that you have already instead of trying something completely new. So maybe having that chicken and rice could be safe, could be really safe instead of having something that you've never had before. You can then slowly but surely start adding to the list of things that you feel comfortable eating at that restaurant each visit. Of course, if you're served something you really don't feel comfortable with, say something and don't feel obligated to eat it. It is your safety. If you do not feel safe, do not eat it. So Tamara's hands up. Do you want to share something? Do you have a question? Um, maybe if you're um, at a restaurant and it's like um, an all-you-can-eat restaurant, then make sure, like, ask the person at the front where you, like, pay and pay for the people um ask them what would most likely be safe for you yeah absolutely so what was your question in that um like 
I didn't really have a question. It was kind no, of fine. Uh, I think your statement was awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, I see Haley's hands up. Is there something you want to share? Or a question that you have? Um what if on the menu chart it ha it doesn't have a dot on it? Um, but it actually but it's mistaken and it actually has peanuts in it. Um, so there's nothing that we can, we don't know for sure, right? So we, um, so when they have an allergy menu, we can't, um, if something was cross-contaminated or done by accident, that's why it's still important to ask questions. So even though it's on the, um, even though something's on the list or something that's being safe, make sure with the restaurant manager or with the chef that it is actually safe. I hope that answers your question. So somebody asked, do restaurants have EpiPens? So we covered that in the beginning. Restaurants do not have EpiPens, guys. They do not. So that's why it's so important to carry your own EpiPens. So I'll answer another question from the questions I was given. So are fast food chains the same in the US as they are in Canada? That's a really good question. So even though the chain looks familiar, they may have different food options or food suppliers. So it's important that you don't make the assumption that since it was okay in Canada, that it should be okay in the US. So guys, places are different, they serve different food, even if it's just from Canada to the US. For example, McDonald's. McDonald's menu changes in every single country. I hear in, I hear that they serve pizza at McDonald's in Italy. So their menu really does change in every country that you're in. So it's important to double check every time that you go and really ask those questions. So somebody, um, somebody just asked, are there any recommended restaurants? Um, there are definitely some restaurants that I find safe that I find very good to deal with allergies and others. Um, but it also does depend on it also does depend on what your allergies are and um, what kind of food you actually you really like, right? So some people don't like Italian foods; they don't want to go to an Italian restaurant. Or some people really like steak. It depends on what your preferences are and what food you like and what food you're allergic to. For myself, I'm allergic to peanuts, nuts, fish, and shellfish. I love steak, so, and one of the best options for me is eating at the keg. Um, they're very, very good with dealing with allergies, um, and I just, I've never had an issue there. A manager's always able to come out and talk to me, and they're able to make sure that I have a great experience there. Um, Another restaurant which I love um, is called Scatabouche. It's an Italian restaurant, and they're also very, very good with allergies and making sure that the restaurant manager comes out and talks to me. Okay, guys, I'll ask, I'll answer one more question. So should I talk to the wait staff, the chef, the manager, or all? That's a good question. Because sometimes when you walk into a restaurant, you